Okay, so in this episode, I'm gonna tell you a story. Story happened eight years ago, roughly, and it happened at just the moment, because these sorts of things do, right? They happen at just the moment when uh, we're ready for whatever's next in the curriculum. I was at an art show and there was photography and sculpture and ceramics and uh, it was just outdoors, but there was kind of a roof and it was beautiful and there were so many things to see. And I come around the corner and there's this table that this ceramic artist had set up and instantly, just like 20 feet away, I was like, that table, that's, <laughs> that's the table I'm going to because the stuff was just weird. Just like, you know, when you come across somebody who, whatever they're doing in the world, they're listening to their own music and you would like to have their headphones for a moment, that kind of thing. So I go over to the table and this person had made so much stuff. It was the volume of it and it was just like weird faces and curved, distorted. It was just, oh God, it was so good. But then it was like entering somebody's world. But there was one whole section where they had made these baby heads, these ceramic baby faces, but the babies, how would I describe it? Those babies ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Like, were these babies like one and a half years old or like 111? It was very fuzzy with like broken, weird teeth. It was just, and then the artist had typed like imprinted words on the foreheads of the babies. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was so disturbing and slightly genius. And there was one in particular, an orange one, that when I saw it, I was like, I'm buying that. I don't even, I don't know how much it costs, but I don't even know if I care because I have to have it. And this is it, an orange baby head. And I don't know if you can see that, but see how it just ate, right? But on the forehead of the baby, the artist put these letters, O-H space T-H-I-T. So it reads on the forehead of the baby, oh, Theot, <laughs> please tell me you enjoyed that. I'm telling you, I saw it, I had to have it, I bought it, I brought it home, and whatever it is, I'm telling you about it now, nine years later, because it's so absurdly, weirdly wonderful. But this artist, the gifts were just beginning because on the back, the artist had put the name of the piece, Babyface, and then he put his name and he put his address and he put his phone number. So not only can you own Othea Babyface, but you could go over to the artist's house, or I guess you could call the artist to talk about Oh, that. Now, here's why this is interesting. At that time, we lived on this ridge on the side of a mountain, and our house was like, went down, it went down below our house into a canyon, and then there was a road on the other side of the canyon, on the other ridge going up the mountain. And when I looked at the name of the street that the artist lives on, I realized that when I sat down each day at my desk to do my work in our house, I looked across the canyon at the street that this artist lives on. And I was like, I can probably see the house that this person lives in who made Otheat. I know, you're like me, you're the, the poetry of it. Now, at that time in my life, I was really, really struggling with God, how do you even say this? Who I, who I was, what I did, who I am in the world. You know that thing when you're at a party and somebody asks you what you do and you don't know how to respond? And the way that you respond is just awkward. You either give too much detail or not enough or you're vague and they're like, huh? And like you have something to hide, but you don't. You just, you, you, you don't know who you are. And there was something about the seriousness of trying to be me, something about the like self-importance of this thing that I'm doing, but it was bumping up against the absurdity. It's like we grasp at these titles, these descriptions. 
I just need to be able to tell people what it is that I do. It's like we attach to this thing in our head about what we think other people think about us and what we need to do to feel like we're part of things, to feel like we belong, all that stuff, all that clutter that gets all jammed up in your head and heart. And it was causing me a great deal of agony. And then I just go to this random art show and I go around the corner and there's this Othiat baby face. And I realize that in the morning when I get up and I sit down at my desk to do my Rob Bell work, <laughs> there's a guy across the canyon, I could probably see his face, who's sitting down to do his work, which is Othiat. And that guy, that massive table full of stuff. That guy's not worried about who he is or what he's doing. That guy doesn't. What does that guy say at a party? What do you do? Uh, I'm, I'm sort of the inventor of the Othiat line of ceramic baby faces with missing teeth and horror film Stephen King eyeballs. <laughs> that guy's just doing his thing. You know what? That guy made peace with the absurdity of it all a long time time ago. You don't make this if you're still like, who trying. You, you've, you've made peace with the absurdity of it. Is this you? Is this you? Because this has been me a number of times over the years. Just all like flustered and bothered and fixated on trying to figure out how I describe whatever, who I am, what I do, my contribution, my purpose. Here's what the curriculum will do. Here's what the universe will do. Here's what love will do. It will send something your way to free you from some of that grasping and clinging energy. It will send something. Sometimes it sends something painful. Sometimes it sends something heartbreaking. Sometimes it sends a loss. Sometimes it sends something embarrassing and humiliating. Sometimes it sends something so delightfully surreal that it just reminds you you can relax you don't really it's just not that big of a deal it really isn't it really isn't you just find something that you love or something that lights you up and you give yourself to it and then maybe that comes to an end and you do something else yeah it's really important that it's complicated and we're figuring it out and it matters and and it's also, yeah, oh, the it. <laughs> We're just here having this experience. <laughs> yeah, just saying to ourselves, yeah, oh, the it. <laughs> That's episode 352.